Hello everyone. So today uh, we are going to look into another very important topic in your syllabus and that is your pericyclic uh, reactions. Okay. So this is uh, one category of reaction that comes under your organic chemistry. So, so far if we just try to look at what all reactions you have learned so far you'll find that uh, there are three categories uh, that you might have come across and these are basically the polar the radical okay and then the new one which you're going to study uh, in this particular module and that is the pericyclic uh, reactions okay so uh, polar what do you mean by polar so in this uh, polar reactions basically you are going to see your uh, charged species like uh, electron rich species like nucleophiles electron poor species like electrophiles so in this you might you will talk about the nucleophilic substitution reaction the electrophilic substitution aromatic substitution reactions okay so nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction all these are involving charged species okay and that is why you have uh, the, uh, the the these reactions being uh, classified under the class of polar reactions. Okay. Now the second type of reaction is the radical reactions. Now what is a radical uh, reaction? Basically, radical reactions means here uh, what is involved is uh, no charged species, but rather radicals okay so uh, you might have come across the halogenation of alkenes so those reactions come under the category of um, ha um, free radical reactions because uh, in the presence of light you have the halogens uh, undergoing homolytic cleavage leading to the formation of halide radicals which then halogenate your alkanes okay so those uh, type of reactions which involves radicals are basically categorized under the category of the radical reactions in the organic chemistry now this pericyclic reaction okay which is a new term that you might be hearing for the first time okay this particular reaction doesn't involve any polar species it doesn't involve any radical species but it involves the reorganization of the electrons in the reactants via a cyclic transition state this particular thing is very very important so in this pericyclic reactions uh, you will be seeing the formation of a cyclic transition state now transition state you might have also seen uh, when you talked about the nucleophilic substitution reaction suppose the sn2 reactions you had a five member transition state that is formed okay likewise um, uh, when you talk about uh, any other reactions when you talk about the mechanism you might have come across the uh, transition states there okay uh, but so transition state we also observe in this pericyclic reaction but we do not see any kind of polar species in the pericyclic reaction but you see a reorganization of the electrons uh, leading to the formation of a product via a cyclic transition state for this uh, the very common example okay that you know of is the deals order reaction so i'll talk about this then you will know what exactly is a pericyclic reaction. So here pericyclic reactions include those reactions where there occurs a reorganization of electrons in the reactant via a cyclic transition state leading to the formation of the uh, requisite product okay so deals order reaction something which you have learned previously is one of the reaction that comes under the category of pericyclic reaction so let's uh, try to look into the different types of the pericyclic reactions from this probably you will be able to appreciate uh, what you are reading uh, what what i'm trying to mention you here in this particular 
uh, definition of pericyclic reactions. So we have three different types of uh, pericyclic reactions. Uh, one of the pericyclic reaction is referred to as the electrocyclic reaction. Okay, it is an intramolecular reaction in which a new sigma bond is formed between the ends of a conjugated pi system. Okay, so let's look at this reaction here. So you have a triene system and what you see here is the double bonds are kind of conjugated to each other. Okay, now in the product what you see? You see here uh, a reorganization of these double bonds happening and you have the formation of a new sigma bonds between the ends of the conjugated pi system. Okay, so electrocyclic reaction involves uh, two important uh, changes. One is the formation of a sigma bond. Okay, and then you see that the product has less number of uh, pi bond. In this case, it is just one pi bond missing uh, in the product. Okay, so initially we start with three pi bonds and uh, what you see here is a uh, uh, what you see is a uh, kind of uh, two double bonds only. So one double bond is less. So whenever you see such phenomena happening, okay, we distinguish those reactions uh, come in under the category of uh, electrocyclic reactions. Now, if you talk about uh, like I told you that uh, you have reorganization of electrons happening here as told in the definition reorganization of the electrons okay that is what is happening in this particular reaction okay and uh, it is giving you the product via a cyclic transition state okay so let's try to understand what would be the transition state here so if I try to draw a transition state probably let me use another uh, color so as to distinguish it. So let me draw the outer periphery of the reactant. Okay. Uh, so you have this particular thing here. Now what is happening during this reaction is we have the formation of a new sigma bond here. So I will draw a dotted line something like this. Okay. So you have a new sigma bond being formed here and in during uh, while the new sigma bond is forming you have the breakage of a, a double bond happening here and you have the formation of a double bond here and then the breakage of the double bond here so that also you will show it as a dotted line then we have the formation of a new double bond here that again you will be showing with a double bond and then you have the breakage of this double bond which you again will show something like a dotted line. So I hope this particular figure is pretty clear to you. All these bonds I have dotted, uh, uh, written as dotted line in order to emphasize the fact what is happening is a transition state where you have the movement of these uh, uh, pi electrons happening. Okay, and uh, at some place you have the breakage of the pi bond happening, at some place you have the formation of a pi bond happening, some place again the pi bond is broken, some place the pi bond is uh, kind of forming and some place the pi bond is again breaking and you have a new sigma bond being formed. So it is a kind of cyclic transition state. So transition state often when you draw in the other reactions you might have shown uh, the bond formation and the bond breakage via a dotted line. So that is what I have done here. So the intact outer uh, sigma bonds I have kept as a solid line while those bonds that are breaking and those bonds that are forming I have shown it with the dotted lines here. Okay, So that is the cyclic so it's a, in the cyclic nature okay uh, this particular figure could be more uh, better drawn uh, like this I'll draw a little bigger okay uh, to show you uh, important thing here okay 
So uh, what I'll draw is since all the pi bond are forming and breaking, so I'll draw them like this. Okay, now here the sigma bond is actually formed because of the pi bond. This pi bond moving here is actually causing the formation of a sigma bond here. So basically, I'll draw a transition state where I join these dotted lines here because the pi bonds are actually resulting in the formation of a sigma bond. So this is the more correct cyclic transition state for this uh, electrocyclic reaction. So cyclic transition state so it's just appearing in a cyclic manner so this is the more correct cyclic transition state leading to the formation of this particular uh, cyclohexene okay hexdiene basically okay so this is uh, how you get a cyclo compound from a open chain alkene okay now if we look further you see that this particular reaction, I have shown it with an equilibrium sign here. Okay, What I have shown is an equilibrium sign here. So that means this reaction can proceed both ways. Okay, uh, In the case of uh, the formation of a cyclohexene from this triene system, uh, the forward reaction is uh, more preferred in comparison to the uh, reverse reaction. So more of this particular product is formed. However, uh, when it comes to cyclobutene, okay, it's a highly strained ring. You know from the bear strain theory that uh, four-membered rings are kind of a uh, very, very strained ring. Okay, So this uh, will undergo a kind of electrocyclic reaction leading to the formation of a open chain diene. Okay, So what happens? You have the pi bond moving here and the pi bond coming here leading to the formation of a open chain butadiene okay so if i ask you to draw a cyclic transition state it is pretty simple the bonds that are intact i'll keep like that so these bonds which are not actually involved in any formation or breakage i'll keep it uh, like this so what is happening is you have this pi bond being broken okay so I'll draw something like this and then you have a new pi bond being formed here so again I'll connect those dotted lines here then this sigma bond is breaking so again I'll draw it like this okay and then you have the formation of a new pi bond here okay so this is the cyclic transition state uh, that we can draw for uh, this particular electro uh, cyc uh, electrocyclic reactions leading to a ring opening in this case okay so i hope uh, now you are able to appreciate uh, the definition of a pericyclic reaction uh, basically what is happening a reorganization of the uh, electrons is happening and in the process uh, a reorganization of the electrons is happening via a cyclic transition state leading to the uh, respective uh, products okay so this is the uh, one that is electrocyclic reaction so here we have the formation of a sigma bond and you have uh, in the product less number of uh, what you say the pi bonds okay in the next video we'll discuss the next uh, pericyclic reaction thank you